around 40 percent GLA, even higher. Some of it, it goes up to 60 percent or more GLA. That is amazing. But then, of course, you're going to be dealing with all the genetic modifications, and you never know when you start modifying genetics. You just don't know what's happening. But you're certainly going to be seeing safflower oil, high GLA safflower oil in nutritional supplements, probably in foods. The company that makes it is a company called Arcadia Biosciences, and they're really making a big push to food processors and supplement manufacturers to use their genetically modified super high GLA safflower oil. The new stuff, as I say, is over, according to the company Arcadia Biosciences, is over 60% GLA. That is astounding. The primary market probably will be nutritional supplements. You can expect to see more and more uh, GLA nutritional capsules that feature this high-tech creation, Frankenstein creation, genetically modified, uh, modified safflower oil. There's a lot of upside to GLA, a lot, a lot, a lot, especially when it comes to skin health. But because inflammation plays such an important role in the disease process, and because GLA is such an effective anti-inflammatory, pretty much all health conditions, not just skin, all health conditions can benefit from GLA supplementation. Gamma linolenic acid, for you guys who are chemistry minded, uh, GLA, gamma linolenic acid, is important for pretty much every single health condition that involves inflammation, which of course is pretty much every, uh, every single health condition, certainly degenerative health conditions. And this is why the ultimate EFAs, are the foundation, or one of the foundations of the flagship health protocol, Dr. Wallach's flagship health protocol, the Healthy Start Pack. It's anchored by the ultimate EFAs and the ultimate EFA plus. This whole nature of anti-inflammation and inflammation, both anti-inflammation and inf inflammation, is really important. And its relevance to the disease process and its relevance to good health is it's worth spending a couple of minutes on. It's so important, the balance between anti-inflammation and inflammation. The body is constantly balancing things. The body is constantly balancing antagonistic or opposing uh, biochemical processes. So prostaglandins are involved in mediating or controlling anything that happens in the body, and that means prostaglandins are also involved in this balancing process. Excitation and inhibition of brain cells. That's an opposing or antagonistic kind of relationship in the body or a biochemical process that occurs in the body, excitation and inhibition, and prostaglandins are involved in the excitation and inhibition of, of not just brain cells, but nerve cells in the body. Same with contraction and relaxation of muscles. Muscles are constantly contracting and relaxing and sort of balance. If they relax too much, that's not good. If they contract too much, that's not good. It's a balance between contraction and relaxation that allows our muscles and us to move appropriately, and guess what? Prostaglandins control this balance there too. Same with dilation and constriction of blood vessels. You don't want your blood vessels opening or dilating too much, and you don't want them closing or constricting too much. And again, it's prostaglandins that mediate or control this dilation and constriction of blood vessels. These are all examples of antagonistic, opposing processes that occur in the body that have to be tightly controlled and tightly balanced to keep us healthy. To this list of contraction and relaxation, excitation and inhibition, constriction and dilation, you can add inflammation and anti-inflammation as another example of a balancing, a balancing act that has to occur in the body's biochemistry and prostaglandins here too are critical in controlling this balance of inflammation and anti-inflammation. So you don't have too much inflammation, you don't have uh, not enough inflammation and you don't have too much anti-inflammation or, or not enough anti-inflammation. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening. We are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday on the Genesis Communication Network, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page, brightsideben.com. We've got three and a half years of good health information up at, uh, on the archive page, brightsideben.com. Or you can go to Ben Fuchs Archive, or Ben Fuchs Archives, they both work, uh, .com. And you can search programs or search topics via keywords. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. Also want to encourage you to check out my blog, pharmacistben.com, which we update regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. Thank you to Robert Lundgren, who sets up, who does such a good job at uh, pharmacistben.com. So you got two, three main websites, pharmacistben.com for my blog uh, and also for news stories. We've got 
brightsideben.com with longevity information and videos, et cetera. And then we also have Ben Fuchs Archive or benfuchsarchives.com with a search engine. Uh, all the archives, all the programs up with a search engine as well. Okay, a couple more things I want to say here about anti-inflammation and inflammation. And prostaglandin balance is really what mediates this uh, anti-inflammation and inflammation balance in the body. There's prostaglandins that are associated with inflammation, and there's prostaglandins that are associated with anti-inflammation. And even though we beat up on it, the inflammatory process as being uh, the core, the root of all disease, it's really not inflammation as much as it's excessive inflammation, as much as it's long-term chronic inflammation, as much as it's inflammation that's out of balance with anti-inflammation that is the problem. Inflammation is really important. It's how the body protects itself. It's what initiates the healing process. The inflammatory process, in a way, is more important than the anti-inflammatory process, at least from a survival need, uh, perspective. And the prostaglandins that are uh, associated with the inflammatory process are derived from a different EFA, a different essential fatty acid, than the prostaglandins that are derived from the anti, uh, that are de uh, derived from anti-inflammatory essential fatty acids. And this is really important. It's a balance of inflammatory omegas and anti-inflammatory omegas, inflammatory essential fatty acids balanced with anti inflammatory essential fatty acids that is so important when it comes to supplementation. And as it should, uh, it should come as no surprise for you to know that our excessive intake of pro-inflammatory omega fatty acids or essential fatty acids with pro-inflammatory omegas that contain pro-inflammatory omegas is really, at least some nutritionists believe, at the root of much of our inflammatory disease health crisis. We will tell you about that tomorrow as we continue talking about essential fatty acids and prostaglandins and master hormones or, or uh, autocrine hormones, as they are technically called on our next Bright Side episode. That'll be tomorrow. So tune in. Uh, you're going to want to tune into that if you're interested in learning more about inflammation and anti-inflammation and how to use your essential fatty acids and also how to use GLA effectively for inflammatory health issues, especially skin inflammatory issues like eczema and acne. We'll talk about that tomorrow on The Bright Side. Time to hit our phones. 855-660-4261 is our number. Let's go to Mary in Michigan. Welcome to The Bright Side. What's going on, Mary? Well, thank you, Ben, and and I really want to thank you for everything you're doing. I've learned so much from you. I, I you're you're thank just. You. I, <laughs> I don't know what I'd be doing without you. Thank you. I appreciate um, that. I I have got um, a heart arrhythmia. Okay. Uh, and I mean, it's not just uh, you know skipping a beat. It's 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 really jumping. Are they out. drugging you? Are they drugging you out? And what I don't know what that means. Are you on drugs? Are you on oh, blood no, thinner? No, 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 okay. no, no. Okay. Sometimes I'll put you <laughs> no, on blood no, God, thinners. No. No, okay, God, good. No. <laughs> good. And the major treatments for these heartbeat issues are beta blockers, which shut down your heart, poison the right. hearts. And then sometimes they'll give you blood thinners to keep you from uh, having right. a stroke. However, right. heartbeat issues need to be regarded as a short circuit. The heart is an electrical system. It's really, right. really amazing how the heart works to, to pump out b a billion times in a lifetime. It's mind-blowing, really, and it all involves electrical energy. Now, uh, it's not any different, really. Uh, having heartbeat issues is not any different than having any other health challenge in the sense that you're looking at inflammation, you're looking at nutritional deficiencies, right. and you're looking at an imbalance. So let's get okay. to the chase here. Let's cut to the chase. Okay. It's really can, easy. Can, can, I, can I ask you, um, if you have had a heart attack, would that? Doesn't matter. It wouldn't Same. matter. No, it, well, it can, a, heart it can, a heart attack may, you may have some, de some dead tissue in there, and that's going to also affect uh, how the electrical energy proceeds, but it doesn't matter in terms of what you're going to be doing to prevent this from okay. happening. Okay. okay? So first, okay. And for, first and foremost, you want to regard, it, uh, you want to regard uh, electrical conductivity issues in the heart as a sign of some kind of burden on the body. Something is stressing the body out. Now, if you hold your breath... Uh, which is a major stressor on the body. If you hold your breath too long and you rob it of oxygen, you'll notice that your heart's going to start to freak out. Mm -hmm. And that's a classic sign, uh, uh, that's a classic example of how the stress response is related to conductivity, electrical conductivity issues in the heart. That's just for you to observe or to, to notice the relationship between stress, uh, physiologic stress, and the heartbeat right. and electrical conductivity. So okay. you're probably not holding your breath. You're probably not sitting there holding no. your breath, right? But you're probably doing it a little bit. You know, well, when we're I'm, under... I'm... 
I'm doing, I'm trying to practice the deep breathing okay. you've been talking the, about. I mean, I've been following everything you've been saying. So Well, I'm, hang tight, hang tight. Let me finish okay. up here, okay? Let me finish up here. So you're probably not sitting there on the couch holding your breath, but you probably are holding your breath slightly or at least uh, uh, experiencing shallow breathing when you're under stress. This is one of the one of the ways that we deal with stress is we hold our breath. In fact, you'll notice before uh, something something dramatic like a, a, a something's about to fall. If you're if you look at your, you're looking at your kitchen counter and a cup is about to fall, you'll notice if something as benign as watching your your glass about to break is going to cause you to hold your breath. You'll go like this, <gasps> like that. You know, you ever make mm -hmm. that sound like that? Okay, mm -hmm. that's a sign of how we hold our breath when we're under stress. If you, mm -hmm. God forbid, if you're about to get into a car wreck, you know, one of the first things that's mm -hmm. going to happen right before the accident is you're going to go like this. <gasps> I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't want you to imagine getting in a car wreck, but anybody out there who knows, knows that there's a, a holding the breath response that occurs right, right before we're stressed. And this will happen in response to thoughts as well. So you got to be able to watch out for, the, for when your breathing becomes shallow or when you're holding your breath, and then you want to start to, to re, you want to reverse that, and you want to, with volition and with will and with attention, with consciousness, practice slow, deep breathing at those times. In addition to the two minutes a day that you're spending on the couch, slow, deep breathing as an exercise, whenever you notice you're holding your breath, you want to turn that into a deep, an opportunity to deep breathe. That's step number one. Step okay. number two, step number two is going to be to eliminate the entrance of any toxicity into the body, and sugar is a major toxin. After, okay. the, after the small amount of sugar that we need to run our brain and, and run our, some of our cells, uh, the excess of sugar is a major toxin, and that will put a, a super stress on the heart. So keeping right. your sugar intake down, uh, replace calories from sugar with protein and with uh, essential fatty acids as well as butter and coconut oil. The more fat and the more protein you eat, the easier it's going to be to wean yourself off of these foods that can uh, mess up conductivity right. in the heart. That's the second okay. thing. The okay. third thing is you want to start to take in electrical nutrients, nutrients okay. that are electrical, and there's lots of them. Are you on the Healthy Star Pack, Mary? I am doing the... Uh Beyond or the okay. BTT. BTT. And... Stay on the BTT, and okay. you may want to double your dose. Make sure you're sipping on it. Yeah. Uh, start to uh, make sure you're on the essential fatty acids, which are also electrical. Um, you know. Magnesium is also very, very important for the heart. It's an electrical right. mineral. Make sure you're on the Beyond OsteoFX. You might want to throw in some coenzyme Q10, 100 milligrams or so of coenzyme Q10. Make sure it's the oil soluble capsule, and then I probably be throwing in uh, coenzyme Q10's cousin or, or relative, which is vitamin E, 400 international units right. of, of vitamin E a day. Okay. Two more things I want to tell you about, so hang tight, don't go away. Uh, I'll finish up with Mary when we get back, uh, when we come back from our break, and then we'll uh, hopefully get to all our calls as well. I'm Farm Spen. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. All right, we're talking to Mary in Michigan on the bright side. Mary, I'm going to go a little quickly here, okay, because i got a bunch of calls I want to get to. So number one, slow, deep breathing. Number two, if you've got any digestive issues, link those to foods and eliminate those foods. That's yeah, so important. That. Okay, well, you still got an issue, so something's I missing here. I know I do. All right, well, let me keep going here with some nutritional right. supplements. The BTT, keep doing that. Sip on it. The uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine is loaded with the B-complex, uh, which are your electrical conductivity vitamins. Cells conduct electrical energy using the B vitamins. Make sure you're getting lots of them. Fresh vegetable juices is also a good source of the B-complex. Any yeah, fresh veggies. That. Any mm -hmm. fresh veggies will help you. And then the BTT, as I say. A couple other things that could be important in addition to coenzyme Q10 and vitamin E, which we talked about before we went to break. Uh, arginine is very important for the heart, and car uh, I'm sorry, taurine is also really important for conductivity issues. They put it in Red Bull for that what reason. Was that one? It's called taurine, T-A-U-R-I-N-E. Okay. Uh, get yourself about 200 milligrams to 300 milligrams a day as a supplement. It comes in 100 milligram capsules, so two or three of those a day. Uh, I'd be using some vitamin A. 20,000 yeah. international units a day of vitamin A as well. And then uh, there's a really interesting kind of amino acid sort of substance uh, that we don't talk about a lot, but we probably should, and it's called carnitine. You've probably heard of that. Okay. And you, uh, there's different types of carnitine, but you want to at least maybe 500 to 1,000 milligrams of carnitine uh, every day. 500 milligrams of carnitine is probably a good idea. Anywhere from 100 to 1,000 milligrams, but 500 milligrams is a good idea of carnitine. There's a carnitine that's blended with arginine. It's a little pricey, but you might want to try that. Or just get a plain old L-carnitine and see how you do. And last, most, but most certainly not least, potassium and sodium balance is extremely important. Excess 
of sodium, can cause arrhythmias and heartbeat problems. Uh, use the Swear V, which is a wonderful way to get a sodium potassium balance if you haven't tried the Swear V. Um, I've been, I fasted on it uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I did a three day fast just using the Swear V, and it wasn't not hard at all, and I lost eight pounds or so. Uh, the Swear V is an amazing, amazing supplement. It's not really a supplement, it's a food, uh, but it does have an easy to absorb sodium and potassium balance, and that might be something else to try. I did say magnesium, the OsteoFX, uh, beyond OsteoFX is also going to be helpful. I'm sorry, one real quick because I want to get to some more.